Hey YouTube, how's it going? Um, back again with another book review, and this time I want to review Gustave Flaubert's Madame Bovary. Um, I first read this book about 12, 13 years ago, back when I was in high school. Uh, I didn't really feel like I appreciated it. I never really got a lot out of it at a time. I was just like a fairly young reader, just started getting into reading in general, and you know, slowly started to get into more serious literary uh, type books uh, and um, I do remember enjoying it in some parts but for the most part it just felt like one of those dry very detailed uh, books that just went over my head because of my inexperience and you know how young I, how, how young I was um, it's also uh, my edition has a fairly old translation it's actually translated by Karl Marx's daughter Eleanor Marx Aveling um, and it's it, it does sound dated, but uh, rereading re it now, uh, recently, I still feel like it holds up pretty well uh, as far as translations of like you know 19th century uh, text goes. Um, and uh, my experiencing rereading it now was a lot more enjoyable uh, overall, and I really got a much more uh, coherent understanding of what the book is about. I, I I've took my time to parse through some dense paragraphs of like, you know, very detailed descriptions of some events or some uh, descriptions of a, a town or like a character's, uh, you know, inner monologue or something like that. Um, it is overall maybe one of the best books I've read. Um, it definitely does deserve its status as uh, one of those classics. And uh, despite that, I still get a very strong impression that it's not as appreciated as, let's say, Shakespeare's Hamlet or Cervantes' uh, Don Quixote or some other really popular French uh, novels such as Hugo's Les Miserables or Dumas' uh, The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, I mean, again, I, I just don't know if how popular this book is because I don't see a lot of people talking about it. Could be because uh, a lot of people are not into... Uh, 19th century French novels of, 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 of this kind. Um, it is uh, definitely a very influential novel. Uh, when I researched it for uh, preparing for this review, I saw that a lot of my favorite writers consider this to be one of the best novels, if not the best novel they've ever read. Um, I think Julian Barnes said it's the best book ever written. Milan Kundera is highly influenced by this book alone. Um, so is Henry James, who uh, I guess uh, considers this one of the most uh, literary books uh, ever written. Um, Nabokov, Vladimir Nabokov is also a huge fan of this book and uh, I would assume like many other literary stylists uh, like him. It definitely is a book that when you read it seems to put a lot of emphasis on style. Um, I've heard stories before of Flaubert being very meticulous in, his, in the, the words you choose and, the, and he would spend maybe weeks or months lying on a couch uh, full with despair, not being able to <laughs> uh, continue, like not being able to know what words to use next because he'd be so frustrated with writer's block. He was such a perfectionist in crafting the rhythm and the flow of the prose that he would just uh, probably ruin, it would ruin his day or his whole month if he didn't know how to continue it. Uh, there's another element uh, that I've discovered about Flaubert, uh, and I've read the introduction of this book, and that Flaubert was not only concerned with writing, he was really um, careful and meticulous of coming across as unoriginal. He kind of seems to be aware of like the cliches uh, that you know that, that become uh, that make themselves uh, apparent in a lot of works of literature. He didn't want this novel. He didn't want to have any cliches uh, or, or, or uh, um, unoriginal sentiments uh, appear in this book. He, he seems to be very critical of what he calls idiocy or, or the vacuousness of like bourgeoisie literature, of literature that just uh, is just there to entertain or to give people a very shallow understanding, a very superficial idea of what love is, of what life in provincial, uh, provincial uh, towns in France are. Um, and the main plot of this book, which is basically uh, Emma Bovary, a young woman, uh, who gets married off to a uh, you know some uh, guy that she barely knows but still can, you know acquies acquiesces to um, 
she becomes so absorbed uh, with this this idea of love and romance and chivalry that she's read from her books that she's constantly comparing her mundane, banal, ordinary life with this country doctor to this uh, very hyper idealized, you know, notion of what love and romance is, and this just makes her miserable because she doesn't really she finds her uh, newly married husband. Uh, very boring, dull, uh, he's not attentive to her, not just her sexual needs, but just very, uh, you know, he, he doesn't even know that she's unhappy and keeps thinking that he thinks that she's unhappy for, you know, because uh, she's got nerves or she's bo or, or, or she's not happy uh, because, like, she's just, uh, you know, for some trivial reason. And um, I kind of find this to be a very realistic portrayal of, uh, I guess, uh, this universal human longing for something uh, that, that you know, like, like whether it's love, um, power, money, fame, it's like, it's like, there's like a very universal kind of theme I see in this book, is that everybody has, say, a dream or a certain idea of what their life um, should be, or what they have this idea of what their life, uh, how, they, how they want their life to be, but then, then there's like the reality that is, well, it's not that bad, but it is so far from this, you know, ideal uh, that we have set up for ourselves that we just set up ourselves for misery. Um, I do think this is a very scathing critique for of, of uh, romanticism, which is, I think, was like a literary movement that Flaubert came out of. But uh, it, it, I'm not really sure he's his message is to just accept the way things are or to, 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 to uh, put our attentions to life as it really is. He really seems to value uh, some values of, of the romantic movement, like this, this uh, being faithful to like your inner needs and desires, but at the same time he really critiques um, certain characters in the book that carry it way too far, and not just uh, Emma. Um, there's a lot of it's a fairly colorful cast of characters that kind of have a that that, that the way they're portrayed, uh, you could tell that Fulbert is making fun of them because they take themselves either too seriously or they're just a caricature version of of, of a certain bourgeoisie type. Um, you know, apart from Emma and Charles Bovary, uh, her husband, there's like this um, uh, chemist or pharmacist called uh, Monsieur Homme, who uh, comes across as a fairly I guess nice guy, affable, friendly neighbor, but turns out he's just kind of like a, uh, he's pretty full of himself and has certain um, agenda for presenting himself as a certain uh, progressive intellectual who has a very anti-clerical, anti-religious views. I find this to be a very funny like um, portrayal of, 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 of a, a character that comes across as very progressive, but whose intentions in like appearing is very you know, intellectual and progressive and helpful are, are, are revealed uh, fairly early on in the book. But there's not much I can say in, 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 in the plot of the book. Um, the main drive of the novel is Emma's affairs with uh, to other men, and uh, there's there's not much I guess action, other than the psychological conflict and drives that uh, sets up Emma's uh, actions and decisions for the rest of the novel. It is quite like a tragic comic uh, book in a certain way, and that you really feel for Emma's boredom and and. Um, um, on you know lack of fulfillment, it's just a very like relatable for me at least. At the same time, you kind of realize that she's not that good of a person for like, the way she treats other people and not just her husband. Um, there was like a scene where uh, you know she's just crying and miserable, and her daughter comes up to her, her baby daughter, and she just tells her to leave her alone. And you could tell that like it's not just like being a bad parent, and that. She's so caught up with her own inner um, uh, problems that she's, you know, neglecting her own daughter. I mean, I think like through the beginning of the book, when you have the kid, they give off the child to a nurse. Uh, 
to raise. But um, it's, it's just not the only flop character. I don't think Flaubert writes this book to just um, criticize Emma or women of women's stance. Charles is kind of portrayed as a fairly comic, but like, like he, he's like an object of ridicule. He is a mediocre but incompetent doctor whose lack of ambition just makes him the object of scorn, not just Emma, but all, all the you know people around uh, you know the village he works in. Um, the druggist Monsieur Ome is like just someone who's trying to uh, come across as very you know important, but who's uh, you know uh, real intentions, are, I guess, are made clear towards the end of the book. Um, and I would say, you know, the men, or well, at least one of the men that seduces Emma is kind of a piece of shit for, you know, seducing her just for the sake of having another mistress and um, you know, discarding her just when, when like it, it's, it suits him. It's it's like there is no decent good character in the book except for like one doctor that shows up at the, right at the end. Of, when you know uh, the book uh, it's, it's, it's his conclusion. Um, I mean, like before I wrap up this review, I would like to maybe point out like why I wanted to review this. Um, there are a lot of other books I've read. It's my last review, but I just didn't feel like sharing my opinions because I didn't feel that strongly affected by them. Um, well, one of the key strengths of this book is prose, and I do want to read a passage to show. Why I really like it. It's just like a description of like a normal day. It was the beginning of April when the primroses are in bloom and a warm wind blows over the flower beds newly turned. And the gardens, like women, seem to be getting ready for the summer fetes. Through the bars of the arbor and away beyond, the, the river could be seen in the fields, meandering through the grass in wandering curves. The evening vapors rose between the leafless poplars touching their outlines with a violet tint, paler and more transparent than the subtle gauze caught athwart their branches. In the distance, cattle moved about, neither their steps nor their lowering could be heard, and the bell, still ringing through the air, kept up its peaceful lamentation. Uh, now this is just like a taste of like, uh, you know, what I consider to be like some of the greatest prose that I've, I've read. Um, and you can really see the care uh, Flaubert takes in, 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 in not just like the word choice, but in, in, in the flow of the prose. He really takes his, um, he really careful how he measures out uh, sentences. Yeah, and, and second of all, I've already said this, but it is really a very mature, frank depiction of, I guess, not just adultery, but married life. Um, I, I, I think uh, what made this book fairly famous for its time is that it was uh, censored, or it was like, like Flaubert was go, going through a court trial because the depiction of adultery, even though there's no like, detailed sex scenes, there's just, it's not explicit. It's not like, uh, I guess, Henry Miller or maybe even Dage Lawrence. It's, it's just like how frank, uh, how frankly depicted uh, these these affairs are, were so uh, obscene that they offended public taste. I mean, even the prosecutors would call it like it's just too real, and real being meaning obscene for like the the the, the uh, French public. And it made me think that there's it, there's, it it kind of goes in line with this with this um, tendency in in, in French uh, culture or discourse where like. French are just really interested in pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable, uh, what's 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 uh, um, you know proper or what's um, acceptable to say in public discourse and what's uh, taboo. Um, it maybe reminded me of like the Charlie Hebdo cartoons that were just like very offensive to a lot of people, and um, made me think that maybe for for Flaubert's time, writing about adultery in such a straightforward and frank way, it's kind of I mean, it's not even not as insulting as it is now, the, compared to the depiction of the prophet in, in the cartoon. But for its time, it was really like a scandalous topic, and it 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 uh, it did uh, get, make him a lot of enemies. But it also, um, I guess, broke. Uh, it pushed the boundaries 
or what was considered as like an acceptable depiction or acceptable subject matter for a novel. Um, I, I, I mean, it, it, for, for, for like a jaded 21st century guy, it just seems like I don't see what the fuss is about. But at the time, you know, I didn't live in, 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 in the cultural mores of uh, 19th century France, so I wouldn't know. Um, I would say it is probably one of the most mature and well-written accounts of psychological realism. I, I was a big fan, I'm still a big fan of like, you know, the Dostoevsky's and um, those kind of novels that really focus on the inner lives of their characters. And I can see that maybe a lot of that comes from certain kind of 19th century French writers that um, take stock in, in, in the inner lives of their characters. I mean, this is mostly like a characteristic of modernist literature that pays attention less to external reality and more to the internal subjective uh, reality of the characters and I can see the roots of that movement in uh, Flaubert's book which is no small compliment. Um, it's not until maybe uh, the writings of James Joyce, Marshall Proust, and Virginia Woolf that we see this uh, style you know explored in, 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 into its limit uh, in the early 20th century and you know I just see Flaubert uh, kind of taking up the you know these these uh, this movement uh, almost on his own with uh, you know his influence being mostly like, um, you know, people like Balzac were grounded in his own kind of realism and the uh, romantics that, uh, you know, did, 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 did espouse the kind of values that he kind of critiqued. Um, mm -hmm. And I've, I mean, I already said this, like the third thing I really liked about it is like, it's just, it offers a very scathing critique of uh, French bourgeois bourgeoisie values. I haven't re read that many French novels, but a lot of French novels I've read around that time they're very, like, like it, 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 I realize that a lot of French authors pay attention to society and how individuals and, you know, and individuals in society, like, function, like, as a whole and as individuals with all their desires conflicting with one another and the different systems they're a part of. French authors seem to be very sensitive uh, about uh, social issues and, you know, different classes and, 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 and different kind of positions one can take. Uh, you know, as a man or a woman or, or a person or as a foreigner or an outcast. Um, and, it, and it's very interesting that Flaubert doesn't really focus on, uh, I guess, let's say the working class and, 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 and the elite that much. He's really targeting certain subsection or certain section of the middle or lower, lower middle class who, you know, uh, and it's, his message seems to be that if you're rich, if you're like part of the elite elite, like the aristocrat, aristocratic society, it's, it's pretty commonplace to have affairs uh, with other people. But if you're part of the lower reaches of the middle class, uh, the norms of like, like you're not given um, a pass as much as uh, people in upper class. It just shows that how critical uh, these norms are e even for that time. Um, and it seems to be that there might be maybe a social, that there's a function for mo monogamy for people in the middle class, but it just seems that it, it, it's not really yeah, we, it's not really for uh, for any moral reason, because if that were the case, everybody would have been judged equally for uh, you know committing these uh, you know for, for 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 committing these social transgressions. I mean, most obvious one is like you know men don't really get um, hounded for having affairs with women as much as women do, um, and I, I guess that's about it. Um, I don't really have much to say about this book. I've, I've read and taken notes of some of my favorite passages, but I don't want to spend too much time. I feel like my videos are long enough, and uh, if you guys like this review, hopefully come with another one uh, pretty soon. <laughs> hopefully it won't take another several months. Take care, guys.